You know, like Biden held this uh, EV summit, didn't invite Tesla. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. You led. Joe Biden is failing to acknowledge Tesla's existence as a leading innovator of electric vehicles. Elon has taken note, and the battle has begun to accelerate. On August 5th, Joe Biden hosted an EV summit that would embody the values of his presidency. Numerous corporate leaders attended the event, including executives from General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis, which is the parent company for Chrysler. However, the American leader in EVs was missing, Elon Musk. Imagine being the number one American EV manufacturer by more than tenfold, but still not getting invited to an EV summit. Elon Musk was confused. He tweeted, Yeah, seems odd Tesla wasn't invited. Perhaps it was just a mistake or coincidence, right? Well, Elon Musk was about to change a game with an accomplishment Biden couldn't deny. On September 15th, four astronauts launched into orbit, which was an incredible achievement for mankind. Hundreds of thousands of viewers watched SpaceX's on-orbit tour of the esteemed Dragon Resilience. With that network in mind, SpaceX raised hundreds of millions of dollars for the St. Jude Children Research Hospital. Even with this accomplishment, President Biden continued on without saying a word. One user asked Elon, The President of the United States has refused to even acknowledge the four newest American astronauts who helped raise hundreds of millions of dollars for St. Jude. What's your theory on why that is? Elon replied by saying, He's still sleeping. This was in reference to Israel's former Prime Minister, who suggested that Biden was sleeping during a meeting. <laughs> Joe Biden's proposed EV deal looks to unequally distribute EV tax credits to union factories, which Tesla is not a part of. That sounds fine on the surface, because Tesla doesn't need the government's help. However, Biden is not only failing to acknowledge Tesla's advancements, but is also making decisions behind closed doors. At the EV summit, Biden claims that Mary Barra, the CEO of GM, is one of the reasons why EVs have advanced so much and proceeded to talk about a Zoom call that Elon was not a part of. Mary Barra, Barry, she, General Motors, she, I want to tell you, I think she's one of the reasons we're here today. We had a long discussion on a Zoom call with a bunch of labor leaders and other other major business leaders, and uh, she made a commitment, and she's keeping it. Musk was obviously not pleased with Biden's actions, so he proceeded to explain how Biden is controlled by the unions. You know, like Biden held this uh, EV summit, didn't invite Tesla. Invited um, GM, Ford, Chrysler, and UAW. An EV summit on the White House. Didn't mention Tesla once, and praised GM and Ford for leading the EV revolution. <laughs> So you were pissed. Does, does, sound, does this sound uh, maybe a little biased uh, or something? Um, so, um, and then, you know, just uh, it's not the friendliest administration. It seems to be controlled by the unions, as far as I can tell. This is not a political channel, and I do not endorse any party, but it's safe to say that Biden, and for a matter of fact, any government leader, has to appeal to unions and lobbyists. Lobbying is practically legal bribing as lobbyists have a sole mission to influence the opinions of public officials. Legacy automakers are spending millions of dollars on lobbyists every year. For instance, GM spent over $7 million on lobbying just in 2021. More importantly, the United Auto Workers, or UAW in short form, has specifically been spoon-fed by the government. The UAW is one of the largest unions in America, with a focus on helping employees obtain greater benefits. That sounds fantastic on the surface, but the UAW also charges enormous fees. In order to be part of the UAW, workers have to pay 1.44% of their gross pay. 1.44% of a $50,000 salary is $720 per year, which is definitely a hefty amount. So where does all of this money go? New investigations are showing that a significant portion of the UAW's funds is constantly illegally stolen by UAW leaders. 16 people have already been caught so far and auditors have discovered over $2 million in improper expenditures by UAW workers. This spending included gambling, guns, cars, and child support payments, all of which are obviously not related to the UAW. Elon Musk has publicly spoken against unions before. He believes that the UAW fees are pointless when Tesla offers more superior benefits without them. Despite how unreasonable the UAW may be, the group has substantial power and practically controls the government. Billionaire fund manager Ron Barron, who is an early Tesla investor, 
believes that Biden's exclusion of Elon is completely ridiculous, especially considering Elon's positive impact on the world. You know, they, they have a, um, a meeting at the White House for, uh, you know, for uh, companies that are uh, advancing EVs, electric vehicles, and they invite uh, Ford and General Motors and Chrysler and the UAW, and they say thank you very much for all you've done to uh, advance EVs, and, uh, and they don't invite Tesla. <laughs> Is that crazy? Politicians have recently been touting a potential tax on unrealized capital gains, which are gains on stocks that haven't been sold yet. Elon severely dislikes this proposed tax, which the Biden administration has been a proud supporter of. In response to a potential billionaire tax, Elon Musk recently pledged to sell 10% of his Tesla stock in order to pay for potential taxes on unrealized gains. As if the feud between Biden and Musk couldn't get worse, Biden recently announced that GM was the one that electrified the entire auto industry. Everyone knows that Tesla spearheaded the growth of electric vehicles, as the company first started with the original Roadster in 2010 and has now released a Model S Plaid. Despite Tesla's achievements, Biden spoke about Mary Barra, the CEO of GM, as if she was the one who electrified the auto industry. You know how critical it is? Mary, I can remember talking to you way back in January about the need for America to lead in electric vehicles. And I can remember your dramatic announcement that by 2035, GM would be 100% electric. You changed the whole story, Mary, wherever, wherever you are. There you are. You did, Mary. You electrified the entire automobile industry. I'm serious. You led, and it matters. To GM's credit, GM did release the first electric vehicle in the 1990s before discontinuing the program years after. Elon's mother, May Musk, joked about how Biden's speech was so outdated that it must have been referencing GM's EVs in the 1990s. She tweeted, Biden's speech was written 20 years ago, just before GM killed the electric car. His speechwriter uploaded the wrong file. Elon Musk replied by sighing and attaching a video of Biden losing his train of thought in the middle of a speech. If you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to, anyway, I'm, we're going to get a lot done. One Twitter user responded to Elon by talking about how Biden's speech was a slap in the face to all the American Tesla employees who worked so hard to actually lead the way. Elon replied by saying, indeed. As most of you already know, among the Biden administration's team is Kamala Harris, the vice president of the US. Shortly after Biden's speech, Kamala took a subtle jab at Tesla by saying, with the bipartisan infrastructure law, we're going to build electric vehicles and the batteries and parts that go in them in the United States instead of relying on other countries. The future will be made in America. Kamala is essentially disregarding Tesla by claiming that the Biden administration's EV bill is the start of the American EV revolution. Everyone knows that Tesla, the leading EV automaker that literally manufactures electric vehicles in America, started the EV transition. The traditional automakers were simply too late to join in on the rise of EVs. Not only that, but Tesla is extremely vertically integrated and therefore manufactures most of its parts in America. According to the America Auto Index, 65% of the car parts in the Model 3 come from America, whereas only 24% of the Chevy Bolt and 15% of the Ford Mach-E are sourced from America. One Twitter user stated that for the first time ever, the most American-made car is fully electric. Elon replied, true. Given that information, Kamala's claim that the Biden administration will build the future of American EVs is quite unreasonable. David Sachs, a well-known venture capitalist, retweeted Kamala's tweet by saying, The future is already here, and it was built by Tesla. Epic gaslighting by the White House. First to snub Tesla at their EV summit, and now to pretend their union payoff in BBB will be responsible for Tesla's EV revolution. Elon joked around by replying, Maybe they are NPCs, and Tesla just isn't in the dialogue tree. Let's see if we can get them to say the word Tesla. Joe Biden's support for GM is ironic, given that Chevrolet is failing to successfully manufacture EVs. GM's flagship EV, the Chevy Bolt, was recently forced to be recalled due to fire risks. At least 8 Chevy Bolts manufactured from 2017 to 2019 have been engulfed in flames due to battery issues. This has affected the production of the Chevy Bolt, which has been halted for the rest of 2021. Elon Musk replied to an article detailing GM's failure by saying, Transforming America. Like I mentioned earlier, this is not a political channel and I don't endorse any party, but the Biden administration's ignorance of Tesla is unacceptable. Regardless of your political party, almost everyone should support the transition to sustainable energies. Tesla is an integral part of that movement and should be included rather than excluded in government discussions. 
The Biden administration's strong bias is clearly motivated by corrupt forces, whether it be from lobbyists, connections to unions, or power dynamics that are behind closed doors. GM did not start the EV revolution, and neither will the unions. Tesla is at the forefront of the advent of sustainable energies, and should receive credit for doing so. That being said, the world is not fair, and corruption frequently occurs, so this shouldn't come as a surprise. Let me know what you think about Joe Biden's battle with Elon Musk down below. Is Biden or Musk wrong, and if so, what should be changed? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.